and welcome to the June the Homemaker Show. I am your host, June the Homemaker, and today on June the Homemaker, we are going to do something that is extremely important. We are going to make some chocolate chip cookies. Now, I had a request for this episode from my friend Gabe, and I used to pay him in chocolate chip cookies for my guitar lessons. At first, I thought maybe he just wanted my chocolate chip cookies and didn't want to work for them, but then I realized he was trying to attract more students to pay him in dessert. She's a homemaker, don't you know? She'll teach you how to cook and sew and how to wield a hammer. It's the June the Homemaker Show. My recipe is a one bowl adaptation of the recipe that's on the back of the Nestle's Toll House chocolate chips bag thing. If you don't need a bajillion bowls, you just need one big one, like this awesome mixing bowl that my mom has had since forever, or at least as long as I can remember. I should also say that chocolate chip cookies are very competitive in this household. I'm not going to give you my sister's recipe because it would end with have your mom put the chocolate chips in the oven because you can't be bothered to set the timer and come back in 10 minutes. So the first thing you're going to do is you need a cup of butter, which is two sticks of butter, and please, no butter substitutes. If you're going to eat a chocolate chip cookie, you may as well just eat a cookie. I'm big on like having things be exactly the thing that they are, and a chocolate chip cookie is exactly a chocolate chip cookie. It is not a pile of spinach. So if you're going to eat a cookie, eat a cookie. And if you want to eat something that does not have two sticks of butter in it, then don't eat a cookie. Then you take your bowl. I don't do things like a cooking show. I do things like normal people, which means I put these two incredibly hard sticks of butter in this mixing bowl. And then I'm going to microwave them so that they get soft. BRB. Basically, you want to microwave it until you can stick your finger into it and it makes an indentation easily. But you still want it to look like a stick of butter. You don't want it to be all melted. Next, we are going to do sugar. We need three quarters of a cup of brown sugar and three quarters of a cup of white sugar. So for the brown sugar, they want it to be packed. So what I usually do is just scoop into the brown sugar container and pack it against the side of the brown sugar container. And I like the brown sugar because they come out in these little packets of brown sugar. And here is the white sugar, which is easier because you don't have to pack it. One. When I was a kid and I used to put these in, I would put the brown sugar perfectly centered in the middle. Then I would make the white sugar go on top of the brown sugar on the three little clusps of brown sugar. And I always thought it looked like the nuclear explosion warning thing. Do you know what I'm talking about? I always thought it looked like that. I was kind of a weird kid. Now we need vanilla. Woo! And a teaspoon of salt. Then I'm going to mix all this up together with a giant spoon, which I don't have. And by giant, I mean pretty much of this size. Like, I don't ever really use a giant mixing spoon. Oh, also, cookies are very important at this time of year because you really need to leave out cookies for Santa Claus. This is what is really important. And Santa Claus has been traveling the world for many a year looking for cookies that are good cookies. He is traveling to, like, chef's houses and, like, really rich people who have personal chef's houses and so I mean honestly the least that you can do is make him some chocolate chip cookies from scratch instead of buying them at your local grocery store. If you're not remotely Christian it's okay because I hear that Santa has nothing to do with Christianity. I've heard tell of that. So I think that all you guys who do not celebrate Christmas should try just putting out some cookies on Christmas Eve and then you never know you might have like a weed when you wake up. You don't know. How would you know? You might wake up and you could find that all your loans are paid or that you have a new car or that you have a new job or a really attractive significant other. Santa can bring you all of those things. And then you can leave me a response video letting me know how it all works out because I'm sure that Santa is going to be there for you. I'm just saying. Now all this stuff is mixed together. So this is my butter sugar mass. Now we're going to add some eggs. We need two eggs. If you're wondering why I'm throwing the eggs, I'm throwing them into the side of the sink that has the garbage disposal. Because eggshells go down the garbage disposal. Or at least that's what my mom tells me. Yes! 
Usually I make the first one and then I don't make the other one, but usually I'm throwing them further away. Usually I'm throwing them from the stove, which is over there, and then I always make the first one, it's like sweet, and then I throw the second one and it always goes like too far or not far enough and then it falls on the floor and then my cats eat raw egg and it just doesn't work out well for anyone. I like to use the bludgeoning method where you pretty much take the flat end of the spoon and you just make everything be flat and then it all mixes together. Now we have eggs and butter and sugar. We need some baking soda. A teaspoon of that. Now it gets this nice buoyant pillowy feeling when it's turning out correctly. See how pillowy that is? It's like a pillowy pillow. Now we're gonna do the flour. Oh, there's a quarter, two quarters, three quarters, four quarters. Okay, four quarters. Is it a, is it a cup and a quarter? Or is it two and a quarter cups? It says two and a quarter cups. Getting a cramp in your hand? The more pain you go through for your cookies, the bigger your present from Santa will be. But I'm not encouraging anybody to like taser themselves while they stir their cookies because that, I don't think that counts. All right, so now we got some dough that's looking pretty good. And once again, I have forgotten to preheat the oven because I'm awesome. So at the beginning, preheat your oven to 375. Man, is that going to happen for every episode? The answer is probably. Now you're going to add your chocolate chips. There are like cup numbers on the recipes for how many chocolate chips to put in. I just like to put in kind of a shit ton of chocolate chips because I think that that as a measurement is pretty appropriate. June the Homemaker, not safe for kids edition. One of my favorite winter desserts is to just take like a couple of tablespoons of chocolate chips, heat them up in the microwave until they are like liquidy and goopy, and then you eat them warm. Because that is delicious, right? They're warm and you're basically just eating chocolate. And you don't go ahead, you don't have to go out and like buy like a chocolate candy bar or something like that. You just keep the chocolate chips. Because then you can also use them in baking. And they're not technically dessert, but they can be a little bit. So I cleaned up a little bit, and now we're going to do the putting the cookies on the pan thing. The most important thing that you want to remember is the cookies are going to spread out when you cook them. And so they need a little bit of room to do that. You don't want to have them super close together because then you're basically going to have, oh my god, a wall of cookie. But you also don't want to have them too far apart because you want to be able to put like a reasonable number of cookies on a pan. I like my cookies to be big enough to get the, oh my god, that cookie is the biggest cookie I've ever seen reaction. I use basically like a big dollop of it. So the cookies are now on the pan and we're going to wait for the oven to reheat and then we're going to put them in for about 10 minutes. You're going to have to experiment with your oven a little bit. Basically they're supposed to be like golden brown on the top. You don't want them to be like, oh my god, I'm going to break a tooth. But you also don't want them to be like, oh my god, I can't eat it. I'm going to bake these and then I will come back to you because that is how I live. These are the cookies that I made. Don't they look kind of amazing? They got a little bit more crispy than I wanted them to, but I think that these are Santa worthy. So I'm going to set them out to cool. Um, and I just use the same baking sheet over and over again. You just take the cookies off the baking sheet and put them on these nice little cooling racks. And then you can just reuse the baking sheet in the oven over and over again until you're done. This is an of glove, by the way. I'm branding today, I guess, with my Nestle Toll House cookies and my this thing. Okay, so now you know how to make cookies that are totally Santa worthy. So you can make them and then you will totally get a wee or an attractive significant other or all your loans paid or a new car. Yep, that's the claim I'm making. This is Jude the Homemaker and you know how to make some cookies and I am signing off. I have been obsessed with making cookies ever since I was a kid and I saw that little clip on Sesame Street about making cookies. Do you remember that one where the girl goes to her grandma's house and they make cookies and it was like back in the day when it was not like, oh my god, perfect cookie batter. It was like cookie batter that basically looked like this cookie batter. That was how I learned what the consistency of cookie batter was supposed to look like. And now they have a veggie monster. Thanks, Jim Henson. I mean Jim Henson's son, because Jim Henson is dead. Remember when he died? That was really sad. I did not approve of that.